This podcast is sponsored by YSE Real Estate Group, offering a tailor-made service, versatility and expertise for all your real estate needs. Are you thinking about selling, buying, investing or having your properties managed? For more information, check our website, www.yycrealestategroup.com. We are passionate about real estate and we love to support local businesses. We hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Cheers. Episode 42. 42. Welcome, with, guys. With Jason Ngo. 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 Um, <laughs> Jason Ngo with YYC Real Estate Group. He's actually part of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and we thought it'd be a great idea to to get him on board um, and talk about the real estate this year. Um, yeah, and see how it's going for you. Um, Sweet. So, yeah, let's get it going. Um yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how many years have you been in real estate? And actually, we should actually talk. How, it's funny how you joined up with us. But yeah, mm-hmm. like, how long have you been doing real estate? Um, and uh, how has it been so far with us? All right. Well, I started real estate three years ago. Yeah. So that's when I got my license. And uh, prior to that, I was just doing retail. Yeah. So I was just at the malls, just doing my thing. And I realized that uh, customer service was actually not too bad, especially when the customers are really friendly and you can provide them value and all of the sort, whether you, where you, uh, build this type type of trust where they actually really like you Mm -hmm. and they want to buy from you. Mm -hmm. Right. And whenever they come back, they're always looking just for you. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, I really thought that, okay, well, if I step this up a little bit further, how can I make this into a real career? Because selling what Pumas, selling Target, whatever yeah. accessories that they have there. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't doing it, you know yeah. what I mean? The paychecks weren't good. Mm-hmm. And so moving after that, I decided to get my real estate license mm-hmm. and I was working at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I decided that uh, real estate might be good for me. The mm-hmm. checks are good. The people might be very good and uh, just kind of lift it off from there, right? Yeah. After I got my license, <laughs> I realized that it was not exactly what I thought. I it feel would like be. you're selling me right now. <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> I wasn't even starting to sell anything. <laughs> it's a story. Yeah. So I started. Um, I started real estate uh, right after I finished, mm-hmm. and I joined a team. So I decided to join. <laughs> was a referral that my friend told me to join. Mm-hmm. It was just a friend. I did no research on myself. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest bite in my ass that I realized. Mm-hmm. But maybe it was a good thing, right? So yeah. so after joining I realized that the team leader that I had, um, despite how much support that she was trying to give me, yeah. I just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I was shy. I was very insecure. And I didn't know how to talk to someone face to face, especially when they're looking up to me as a professional. So unknown yeah. team leader, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, <clears throat> she provided a lot of help for me in the beginning. She was very nice. She was very good. But... Um, we just didn't mingle. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. atmosphere there wasn't as good as where we are now. Yeah. We just didn't understand each other and she didn't provide what I needed. Right. So then just kind of moving along, I did open houses. I did all these things. I tried to get leads. It just wasn't working. I saw no value where I was. So I decided to lean off of it and I found every other excuse not to go back to real estate. Mm. Okay. So the end of year one, I looked back on myself and I thought, wow, you know, I have everything to create for myself and I decided that I wanted to sit at home and play games. Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? Because it was comfortable for me, right? Mm. I decided that being exactly where I was, was where I wanted to be, but that was a complete lie to myself. Yeah. That was, that's, yeah. I feel like that's what a lot of people do is they lie. They lie to themselves. They lie to themselves that the, where they are comfortably is where they want to be. Mm -hmm. But subconsciously when they go to bed, they're Haunts like them. their subconscious they're co- is yeah, coming in yeah. being like you could do better <laughs> oh yeah you oh, want yeah. more you want more it's yeah. true yeah it's, that's it, right that's it's, right it's like when you're not authentic with yourself you you keep on telling yourself by making excuses or reasons of why you're okay with what you're at but like deep down inside at the root of it you're like fuck i could be doing more yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but exactly. how yeah right yeah. exactly it's yeah. how yeah. it's what am i what do i need to get there right uh-huh. so after you know, kind of just reflection, just consulting with myself. I think it was, I think it was the November or the October of that year that I decided that I wanted to go sell cars. Mm-hmm. And it was an easy step for me because I had a family friend that took me in into this dealership and it was very easy. My resume was not 
glowing, right? If I were to actually look at my own resume as a boss, I'd throw it away. <laughs> it's actually garbage, right? Yeah. So he brought me in and he was showing me to all of the sales associates that were there on the floor. One person that stood out to me was this one white dude, okay? Mm-hmm. He worked as a sous chef at a restaurant, very well known in Calgary, mm-hmm. and he just made the top salesman of the month. Mm-hmm three months in a row shit and prior to that he was still working there so he had about two weeks of training and now he's top car salesman we're talking about five six years ten years worth of salesmen on the floor that can't even compete to him i was thinking, what the fuck what the (laughs) fuck is going on here you know what i mean (laughs) how the hell did this guy get his foot in the door like that yeah Uh uh-huh So I decided to myself, okay, well, if he can do it, why the fuck can I do it? (laughs) Like, I'm a dipshit that can't do shit right now and can't figure it out, right? Like, what's my difference between him? He has his cooking. I have whatever I had doing before, Mm -hmm. right? So I just leveled myself off and I thought to myself, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this now. Uh I cannot waver anything. You know, if I'm going to put 100% into something, I need to put into this. And the other reason why I was going into car sales was I thought that with the respect to talking to clients on that level, building trust in a quick, quick manner, building rapport and also completing the sale and, you know, hand holding the entire time if that's what's needed. Right. And so was there a lot of um, car sales training? That they, oh, there was. Okay. There was sweet. huge. Yeah. There was huge. Yeah. So the car sales training was very good. Yeah. Um, they really elaborated um you know the car aspects of things you know okay so this car does this this car does that i made notes for myself i made sure that i didn't forget anything made sure that you know this car does premium this car does regular this car has a turbo this car doesn't right Mm -hmm. just so right off the spot someone walks in the door that's civic si what does it have okay well it has this this and this Mm -hmm. okay and then we're walking around the car and i would explain the car and they would build that rapport right Mm -hmm. in the beginning right so then that's how you kind of establish the trust in the beginning there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Knowing your product. That's right. If you don't know your product, you're <clears throat> trying to sell it. You're fucked. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you need to know all the features, what it does, like how it, like it works, any issues, all that stuff. Because once you know your product and you explain that, um, you kind of build rapport and you build trust from that by knowing your shit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I don't want to dive too much into this, but why do car salesmen like have a kind of a, Bad name to them. Bad name. Yeah. All right. So. I think a used car salesman. Yeah, maybe. used car salesman. I guess. But, yeah. But you weren't doing use. No, I was. I was doing use too. Oh, you were. Yeah. yeah. So oh, we I'm have. Sure. Um, we have everything that we can kind of play around with. Oh. We have new car sales and also used cars, mm-hmm. depending on what the client wants, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean by bad name? If like you can a elaborate a bit, I can explain. Just like always <clears> ripping <throat> you off, or, you know kind of how realtors have a bad name too i i don't know why but they do right um yeah why why do you think i think sales just has a bad name in general it doesn't matter if it's cars or houses or whatever but those are just shady people yeah i i think that's what it is with any type of business there's there's one or a bunch yeah a bunch of bad eggs bad eggs that make a bad name for it generally right because at the end of the day it's just you're servicing someone that's all that's all it is right yeah Yeah. so what i can definitely see is that when there was clients walking into the door they'd have a shield up already they have a wall Mm -hmm. and they'd be very afraid of what i would want to get from them Mm -hmm. even a simple question as how's your day like oh it's okay i'm just looking (laughs) <laughs> you know, you're like, whoa, you're like, you're I like, didn't ask. Uh, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to help you see what you're doing in here today. Yeah. You know, I, I want to help you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is that car salesmen are just like everybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. They need to work and they need to get paid. Yeah. Right. And the only way that that they get paid is if they close a car transaction deal, mm-hmm. right? So some car salesmen, they're very pushy, very pushy, because sometimes they're not getting a sale mm-hmm. and they're fucking frustrated, right? So in the whole entire month, they can get one or two. That's not enough. Yeah. At the dealership I was at, you close one car deal, one of the smaller ones, you get $200. That's crazy. You sell three cars, that's 600 bucks in your paycheck. I'm not even talking about like after taxes either. <laughs> you get like 500 bucks after that, right? <laughs> yeah. That's really sad. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they get desperate. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes when you're in that desperate phase, you can definitely see it. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, if you can see the desperate part of things you can maneuver in your own kind of direction so you can get a better deal you know Mm -hmm. 
So there's a plus and a minus to all things, but I definitely do see car salesmen as shady up front. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing car sales, it wasn't like that. Yeah. I built a rapport. I let them have it their way, mm -hmm. and I push them slightly. Uh -huh. If it doesn't go that direction, they want to come back a different day, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Every single person that tells me, you know what, Jason, I'm going to think about it, that's completely fine. I follow up, follow up, mm -hmm. boom, they come back on the weekend, they bring their whole family, we take another test drive, boom, done deal. Yeah. Yeah. We got a car sale, right? So sometimes it's just kind of just watching the game, yeah. right? Watching yeah. it and seeing it's the same how it goes. It's the same thing as real estate, though. Exactly. Same thing. Exact same thing. Do you think you brought your sales game, like when you learned everything you learned from car sales into real estate? Because, well, I also I actually actually think too, um, with the support it helps. But yeah, in 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 YYC real estate group right now, Jason's known as the 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 salesman of the year, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone kind of jokes about it, um, but you have been killing it since you joined us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you. Yeah, you've done, I, I don't know. How, how many deals? Yeah, how many done? deals have you done, Jay? I'm at 22. 22? Yeah, yeah. That's good. And For your first serious year. Yeah. Yeah. 22, <laughs> three uh, double-end deals. Yeah. And double-end deals is, yeah, if you want to explain what, it, so double-end deal is basically representing both parties. That's yeah. right. So if you get the listing and then basically you bring the buyer up front and then you make the deal happen. Yeah you would essentially get paid for both ends. Mm -hmm. So that's why double end deals are quite amazing yeah. because yeah. yes, you're working on both sides. Yes, it's a little bit weird, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's not as weird because at the end of the day, when the buyer and the seller know what they're doing, mm -hmm. because we're guiding them on both aspects, it's just, we just cannot guide them on a one bias kind of state, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we can't be choosing the seller or the buyer to push against the other one. That's not what it is, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. transaction brokerage. We just kind of, um, show it as both sides and we kind of just push a little bit as needed. Right? Yeah. It's like you mediate the whole process. Um, That's and right. yeah, they do need to sign something allowing you to do that though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's you got to represent them both at the full capacity without giving them too much information on each side. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. But it works out. Yeah. It was so funny, man, how you, how, <laughs> how, uh, you came to YYC real estate group. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we pretty much didn't, we weren't even looking for him. Until yeah, that was a good story. Yeah. We were, <laughs> but it was good though. You were pretty like proactive and meeting us and setting up a time. And that's what we like, you know. Yeah. Initiative. Well, yeah, like I, I, when I initially, we initially met, I was telling Dave, I'm like, we're not hiring. We're not hiring this we're guy. Not, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I was like, we were going out for lunch or something. And I was 30 minutes late. You were going along with him? Yeah, just to oh. do like the intro. You showed up 30 oh. minutes late. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I was <laughs> sitting there at 10 o'clock. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to order. I don't want to do anything. I'm going to sit here and wait about five minutes. I oh. look at my phone like, God damn, it's five minutes already. And he's not here. <laughs> so I didn't want to be rude. I didn't yeah. want to just tell him, hey man, it's five minutes already. I didn't want to be like, hi guy. You know? Like, I you waited wait. 15 minutes. And I'm like, hey man, you still coming? He's like, oh shit, you're there already? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean right now? <laughs> what, what actually, ha yeah. So what happened was I thought it was 20 minutes later. Mm. So it was just like, it was a hectic time when, when you reached out to us, right? Yep. And um, I hate being late. Um... And so when you called me, I was like, what the fuck? And then <laughs> I like zoomed over there. And then it was funny because I, I see, I walk in and, and Jason has his, like the smile in his face. Like, I'm like, bro. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so late. But then uh, I was like, we're not looking to hire, but let's talk about it, you know? <laughs> okay, let me just go over my yeah, yeah. That part, okay? Yeah. I was sitting there dressed up. You I know, didn't even I know great. this story. Yeah. I have my suit on. I felt amazing. I'm meeting one of the partners, right? I feel great. Waiting for him to come in. He shows up. He's like, hey, man, he sits down. And he's looking at me. He looks down. I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck is going on here? This is a weird <laughs> little interview thing. So during the duration of that entire meeting that we had or for lunch, he mentioned that he wasn't looking for anyone to hire at least seven times. Mm. Yeah. At least. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, oh, fuck, you know? <laughs> like, well, I'm already already showing red flags that I'm not compatible with the team or something like that. So mm -hmm. I, you know, just played it off, see how it is. And he was like, okay, well, if anything does work, but we're still not hiring, so I'm going to talk to Dave. We're still not hiring. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> it's like, no problem. I'll talk to Dave. Well, we'll set it up and we'll have a good chat, right? Yeah. 
and then we had our meeting and i had a good vibe right so yeah well pretty... we had good vibes uh, yeah and i was like dave like i think you should meet this person Dave's like all right set it up uh, yeah set it up and then i don't know you guys met here or something yeah we met at the office yeah that's right yeah but you you actually interviewed at other brokerage too and uh right. we were like well because you told me he wasn't we weren't hiring so he almost signed at another brokerage right? yeah 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 yeah. That's you're right. close yeah i was very close because the day before i met you i was at that brokerage mm -hmm. and then the broker there was mm -hmm. just so salesy mm -hmm. right he brought the papers out he was assuming the sale he was writing down dates he was like oh this is when you get your pictures this is when you get your business card mm -hmm. this is how we do things here and i was just like okay well this is a little bit weird mm -hmm. this kind of sounds like what i do you know what i mean like yeah. pushing the sale to sign mm -hmm. right uh -huh. so i decided well this is a little bit weird i'll wait until i get with you mm -hmm. and then see how things go and then when that happened i was like okay well he doesn't want me now i want him more <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i want to see what's yeah what's that up, was right? my whole tactic all along <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Don't want it, don't want it, come on. No. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I, I never contacted him back and he never followed up with me. So yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a little bit weird too. If he wanted me to sign so bad, he would follow me up every single day the day after. But yeah. that didn't happen. So I guess follow up is a huge thing. But uh, after I met you and then I kind of felt your guys' presence getting a little bit warmer, uh -huh. I decided, okay, well, I'm going in for the kill this time. <laughs> I'm going to get hired, right? Uh -huh. So that's how it kind of went. Yeah, no, it worked out. It yeah, worked out. it was great. Because we were in a transition at that point, and like, um, I don't think with that capacity of what we tried to to do without you, like, it actually helped a lot. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, you joined us. Um, you know, you were in car sales, and you came back. Like, what what do you think happened, or what was there for you to make a move to start wanting to level up? I guess. Okay, so um, back to just that uh, one white dude yeah. that was absolutely killing it yeah. right so during the time that i was at calgary honda um there's no set schedule obviously right so i was there So you don't have to be there at a certain time you just go as you please yeah okay yeah. but there there is a set schedule for the minimum amount of time that you're supposed to be there for example from 8 a.m to 4 p.m mm -hmm. right um being me i decided that i wanted to be there all the time so in the month that i was there i was there six days a week mm -hmm. Despite Sunday, because it's already closed, I was there 12 hours a day, oh, the shit. whole entire month. Really? Entire month. So the first week, I was doing my, <clears throat> I was doing my studies, learning S about the cars. So you were there for six hours, uh, six days a week, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Right away. Or right away. Okay. Right away. That's so you good. you had like an an intention. Absolutely. And what was that intention then? If to be there, yeah. To beat that white guy. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Why? Because yeah. if you could do it, why can't I? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. frustrated. I was like, how can someone that hasn't done sales or anything like that get into sales and kill it? That yeah. pissed me off. Did, yeah. did, you, did you talk to him about it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I told him he's fucking damn good at his job. That's what I told him, right? But we can be good him. friends after. You we shadowed him. I did. Yeah. I yeah. did. So I was there six, um, six days a week. And what I did there was... Wait, wait. Is studies. he still selling cars? Or yes, he is. You should bring him and get him to join the team. <laughs> no, he's he's yeah. too cutthroat. Oh, is he? he? Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. I don't yeah. know if he knows how to transition that, but I'll explain yeah, a little later yeah, yeah, about yeah. Uh, why he can't. Right? Okay. So I was there for um, for six days, and I was doing my studies. I was learning about every single car to the T. Right, I remembered every engine spec, every single thing, every detail. Mm -hmm. Right. So after I was done that, um, there was a specific sort of. Um, procedure to push someone towards the sale right so first it'd be you know they come to the door next would be you know doing the showcase of the car third would be sitting them down understanding their their things that they would need you know like oh do they have a family are they single do they need storage do they need all these things do they go snowboarding do they do any of these things what mm -hmm. kind of car do they need right so then once you qualify that you get them a test drive you kind of talk to them in the car you bring them back are they ready for the sale if they're not kind of reschedule if they are then you push for the sale right away mm -hmm. right so every step of those ways is a very complicated little step even the car showcasing the car there's a way to do it right you kind of assume okay so you know you're driving through the mountains you know you stick your head through the sunroof you know you're <laughs> envisioning you're creating this sort of vision mm -hmm. for the client to already own the car right like why is this car better than theirs you know what I mean? Like, despite how crazy that is, you have to do something like that for yeah. that sale to go through, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so even that part, there was just every single step that was a little bit weird, right? Even going down to asking the clients about what things they need, you have to get all this very important information because you bring it back to them afterwards to re-center them back towards the line. The buyers, they go up and down like this, yeah. right? You have to keep them on this level part to go straight towards the sale. If they go off the line too much, you bring them back. Mm -hmm. They go down too much, you bring them back, right? So that's how you kind of get um, that to move forward. So I, you know, spent a lot of time learning. It's like you're guiding them, things. guiding them to the process. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You're guiding them through. You're making sure that everything is good. Mm -hmm. Everything is all checked off. Right. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time that whole month. I didn't sell a single car because I was just doing learning mm -hmm. and every single salesman has their own specialty. Right. <laughs> so one person talks really good on the phone. One person does the sales really good. Right. One person walks around the car extremely well. Everything does, it creates this next step that's very easy them for the next step mm -hmm. kind of deal, right? So I decided that I was gonna sit down with every single car salesman <laughs> and learn everything, everything. The walk around, sitting down, getting the information down, even cold calling. Cold calling was the worst. Yeah. Oh my God, it was so bad. The first cold call I've ever done, I picked up the phone and I couldn't even talk. I was stuttering. Yeah, yeah. I was stuttering so hard and I had to hang up the phone because he was already yelling at yeah. me because I called a do not disturb oh. phone call that was already listed in the system because I did my job wrong the first day yeah. that I got on, right? It was very, very bad. Yeah. After that, I just started to you know do a lot more cold calling. I started to write my own scripts, right? Mm -hmm. These own scripts that catches them in the beginning to get an appointment. Mm -hmm. As soon as they come in, oh my God, I'm just super happy. They're coming in. I want to give them a new car. I want to help them out. Their old shitter is just not doing it. They need a reliable car. Boom, you came to the right place kind of deal, right? <laughs> yeah. So after I, that. I, I think one key thing that um, w how important is it, Jay, to ask for help? So Co important. Right? Because you, you said. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You said like you asked everyone mm -hmm. what their specialty was. Um, I didn't really ask them. I just, just kind of watched. Oh, you shadowed them. Yeah, I yeah. watched everybody do their thing. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, but you had to learn from someone. Absolutely. To expedite Absolutely. your, your, to help you faster. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every yeah. salesman there had something special, yeah. and I asked them specifically about that one specialty that they had. Yeah. So they would sit me down and they would do an example for me mm -hmm. and I would replicate that. I would yeah. replicate it and it wouldn't suit my style. Mm -hmm. So then I changed it to my style, mm -hmm. but still pushing towards what the goal was at the end of the day, right? Yeah. What was your style? My style is just not pushy. Mm. I hate pushy salesmen. Same. Pushy salesmen, it's just like, if I'm not ready to buy, man, stop making me freaking buy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not ready. You're not giving me enough information. Yeah. You're not doing your job, yeah. you know? And when they're not ready to buy, you're not doing your job right. You yeah, know sure. what I mean? So, and if, and majority of the time, it isn't mm -hmm. um, you doing your job right. But the other half of it is just, they're just not ready. Sometimes they're just shopping, right? Sometimes yeah. they're just getting yeah. information. Yeah. I find that a lot of people don't like to be sold. And when exactly. they when they feel like they're being sold, they resist. That's right. Right. So I think it's more important to just present the product and then just ask for the sale if they don't want it. Just you know, like build rapport mm -hmm. and follow up. But the thing is that like it has to be your own choice when you're buying something. Better yet, think about this: instead of being sold, how about you go buy with a friend? Yeah, that's for, that's up from a book. Yeah. What book's that? Probably. Really? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> buy from a friend? Yeah. No, no, no. Buy with a friend oh. instead of being sold. Yeah. So instead of being the salesman, be their friend uh -huh. and buy with them. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? That like is Just true. help them through that they're the process. feeling like they're buying with a friend, right? Uh, so that's the... People don't like being sold to. They like shopping with a friend. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shopping yeah. with a friend. There yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, I like how you were saying that you, you essentially go through like, um, like a questionnaire, like either pre-buyer question almost mm -hmm. and then you create a possibility of what their future could look like with the product absolutely right and and creating that that vision of like what their future could could look like because i feel like that's pretty important even in real estate sales yeah once you create that image and that mindset then people are like yeah i could have that 
And then they start thinking about all the things that they could be doing with this house and stuff like that. And they're like, shit, Absolutely. I want this. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. I think that that dream and also the emotion behind the sale is what gets the sale. Not that, like, the product is there regardless. I mean, mm -hmm. there's going to be so many cars in the dealership, right? But once mm -hmm. you create that possibility of what it could look like in their life, based on the questions that you've asked, then it makes the sale more reinforced. It's like there's some emotion and... and um, like depth on it other than just like i'm just gonna buy this car to go drive from a to b oh yeah, yeah so. oh yeah yeah creating the vision is very important right yeah um actually it's everything because if they yeah. can't see themselves driving it why would they want to buy it they can just not pay for car payment and just have their own right? yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah i think a product helps too because i actually worked in two dealerships mm -hmm. so i worked at honda west mm -hmm. and i also worked at mercedes Ooh. And you see like how people are in those two different lines, mm -hmm. one, one, um, like general car and, and more luxury, right? So yeah. different clients understanding them, their purpose and what they want. And then also the product really helps selling as well too. So, Absolutely. Like yeah. even for Hondas, for example, yeah. um, a lot of the clients that do come in, they're they already know what they want, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people know that Hondas, they live forever. They're amazing cars. They're the best bang for your buck kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it is true. Like the stats do claim that they are. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of times you bring them in and they already, they already know what they're shopping for. So it's, sometimes it's quite easy. But yeah. when they're not, you have to build the brand and you have to build the value all around it. I guess with every business, it's sort of the same thing. Yeah. But, you know, learning that, right where I was during that time was so important because mm -hmm. I never felt that type of presence in business before until I went to car sales. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, car sales changed me completely. Right. From, you know, talking in a certain type of way where it just goes to a certain type of target or a certain type of goal yeah. to just, you know, mm -hmm. holding back from pushing and just being annoying. <laughs> you you got to make your client an advocate. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's all about the trust and rapport and, and that, you know, you're looking out for their best interest, not yours. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you did somewhat good in car sales. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the month that I first started, I actually beat the top car salesman. Oh, so really? I was guy. the top car salesman. So you surpassed him. I did. The first month? Oh, the shit. first month. Shit. The first month. So the mm -hmm. first month I had 15 car sales. He mm -hmm. had 14. Oh, oh man, he was cheese, right? <laughs> you know, but that wasn't the juiciest part. The juiciest part is that car sales, it's, it's not like how you close a car and you make a set commission based on the purchase price like what real estate does. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Depending on how good the car salesman is, whether you get... Um, so say, for example, so for me, I don't really like to give discounts on anything because mm -hmm. anything you discount you lose it off the commission of your own paycheck. Mm -hmm. In comparison to this other car salesman, he gave everything for free. Every damn car he sold, he gave a free set of car tires. If I'm buying a car, I'm going to him mm -hmm. because I'm getting free shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For me, if it needs to push the sale to get that free thing, I will push that. Uh -huh. But if it doesn't, and I built so much rapport, so much trust that they don't even ask for it, that's completely fine with me, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's fine with them also. And that's what's the most important part is, is that both sides are okay with what they're getting, right? Mm -hmm. So every single deal that I got was quite nice. It was at least four times as much as the other guy. Damn. So his 14 deals at the end of it was, for example, five grand in, in total commissions. Mine was 15. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Right? So I got paid <laughs> a lot. So I, I did my job properly. I did it good. Yeah. And then everything was good throughout, right? So my first month there, I sold 15. Top car salesman, 14 the next month, top car salesman, and then 13 top car salesman also. So three months, I fucking straight killed it. The months that came after the winter seasons were very hard. No one really touched that 10 or the teens mark. So mm -hmm. everyone was just kind of just, who cares, right? And there's no top car salesman if you can't sell over 10 in the winter time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, it was a very good time for me. Yeah. What made you want to, because at this time too, you had your real estate license, right? I did, yeah. So what made you, and were you still um, somewhat active in real estate or were you kind of just focusing on this? So I was just completely focused with the car sales. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. The managers were very demanding. Mm -hmm. um, the car sales business in itself, the turnover rate is crazy. Like if you can't perform that one month, they will talk to you that second week into the next month. Yeah. You've sold zero cars in the past two weeks. 
If you can't sell, for example, four in the next two weeks, you're done. That's it. Damn. They don't. And they just they, fire you. They just fire you straight oh, up, wow. and they bring someone else in immediately. <laughs> right? It was it was scary. I yeah. was like, this is paying pretty good. I'm yeah. having a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot. Yeah. I want to stay here. Right. Yeah. So, um, sorry. What was your question? So, what me like? What transitioned you to not want to do sales, like car sales, and then more focus on the real estate? Oh, right, right. So you were saying, so during the time I was doing uh, car sales, I always had real estate in my mind mm -hmm. because I knew that transitioning from car sales over to real estate, my real estate would be my own sort of business, my own sort of brand. No boss, no, 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 no quotas. No quotas. Yeah. No quotas. Yeah. Yeah, no glass it's just whatever ceiling. you set for yourself yeah. in terms of goals and expectations, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I always thought of that. So when the season started getting slow for real estate, I mean, for car sales, sorry, mm -hmm. um, I decided to start reflecting on myself again. So I reflected on myself and I started realizi realizing how much growth I've uh, attained in the previous months mm -hmm. and I decided that I wanted to go back. Mm. So when I went back, I, it was just transitioning into um, the new year. Mm -hmm. And then um, my friend was actually the one that introduced us together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when we had that uh, pho date that you showed up late to. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that was this year. That was just literally that was this, year. this year. Yeah, it was pretty recent, yeah. That's crazy. But that's good, though, because you actually spent time honing your craft and, like, building tools to become a more successful realtor. Because had you not, you might have been in the same mindset that you were when you first joined real estate. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. That's good. This year, you, like, I think in, in, in general, real estate did very well. You did very well. Like, uh, we did very well. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there is something about, I think, you how you handle the clients, building rapport, and, and, and getting that trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, to close this many deals uh, with, you know, within six months is, is, is great. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think your like secret sauce or specialty to build that rapport quickly and get them to gain your trust without being salesy? Okay. So yeah. kind of when you first meet a client, um, the first couple of things is they kind of want to gauge on how productive, how much knowledge you have, that sort of thing without them saying it or not, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So whenever they ask me a question, whenever they get me to do something, I do it immediately. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm doing something or not, I pull out my, you know, my laptop, I do it immediately. Mm -hmm. They want a setup, I'll do it now. They want, you know, a couple suggestions on something, I'll do it right away, right? Mm -hmm. When they go on showings, for example, that first showing is so important because then you get to dress your best. You get to talk to them and you get to meet them face to face. And that's when you lock them down as a client, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Talking over the phone, talking, you know, wherever it is, it doesn't build that much rapport. Mm -hmm. It's the first face to face is what's the most important, right? Mm -hmm. When I sometimes even, for example, one of the clients, um, she was an investor that sold the place and wanted to buy a place. That first time that we went, I bought them coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the coffee before we get to the showing. What do you guys want? Oh, you don't have to do it. No, no, no. I'm here already. What do you guys want? Yeah. Grab it, bring it to them, and then they have it. And we're going through the showings, and it's fun. You know, we're going mm -hmm. to four different places. They still have their coffee. They're just enjoying. We're laughing, you know. Yeah. It's a different type of, uh, like, rapport building. It's just small little coffee costs 10 bucks, right? The sale, if I close, it's fucking eight grand. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, it's good. It's good. That's what I'm saying. But, it is. But yeah. at the end of the day, even if they don't buy... At least it leaves a great taste in their mouth that you did something yeah. way better than what their last realtor was doing, showing up, hey, man, I'm going to be like five minutes late. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, chill out. <laughs> I'm going to be 30 minutes late. <laughs> That's true, though. It's, it's just those little things 100%. that build, like, rapport. Yeah. The absolutely. first impression is the last impression. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's and, right. Um, and, like, when you get into that showing, you can really showcase your knowledge. Absolutely. And Absolutely. What, and once you once they can trust that you know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it, it creates a lot of rapport fast. Yes, yeah. that's right. So you would say that is the most um, that attributes to your most like success for is the first impression you deliver. Absolutely. Yeah. The first impression, also product knowledge, like I said, is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like that investor that I was talking about. She was really concerned about, you know, the upstairs, downstairs being rented out for X amount, how much it is. Mm -hmm. I would do a little bit re a little bit of research beforehand just to get a little bit of an uh, in-depth knowledge on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would do that and I would explain to her 
for example, from the four uh, properties that we're looking at, that one would be better because it has one, a separate entrance, two, you know, laundry suite in the basement, laundry suite on top. Um, there's a garage for the basement. There's parking out front for the other tenants. You know, just every single thing that would matter the most mm -hmm. because they're so influxed with their emotions during the time about the price, about other things, about, you know, the small things that they see. Sometimes mm -hmm. they start to forget where it is. That's why, you know, a realtor is so good because they ground you to what's important mm -hmm. about the investments, about the sale, about what you are buying and what type of money you're making from some sort of thing like that. Right. Yeah. So you so have yeah. to be really detailed, yeah. right? You have Absolutely. to be detailed and outline a little bit of everything. So that there are not any surprises when they take the property. Yeah. And they're like, fuck, we didn't think of this. You're like you didn't think of this cause it's not them. Exactly. Right? It's always going to be you. And they will always put it on you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And <laughs> the client is always right. That's what yep. I learned when I worked in the cell phone industry. Mm -hmm. Client is always right. In order to make it right, you need to do something above and beyond to make them to turn that positive or negative into a positive. Yeah. And you should always end the sale in a positive situation so that um, they're more likely to come back to you mm -hmm. and also refer a business to you for that reason. Yeah. So client retention and client happiness is above the, the pay. Like Absolutely. When, when the service is first, you'll always get paid. Absolutely. Right? So Absolutely. that's that's how I, I think of things is that like you always just got to keep this service top notch. And if it's not, own up to it, create a better solution for it, and then keep them as an advocate for the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's just serving, right? Like it's actually, people just want to make sure they're taken care of. I think that's the bottom line too. Like they just want to be, sh make sure that you're there for them without asking, you know, yeah. you're just like, Hey, everything's good. Follow up, follow up. Yeah. But yeah. I like, I like how you said that you, you get everything done for them right away. Yeah. So that like, um, it's like a priority. They feel like they're being serviced and stuff like that because yep. that's something that's easy to forget. Once you start getting busy, you're like on the fucking road again. You're like, fuck, I forgot to do this. Like, yeah, it's, it's good to just get it done when you say you're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's so important. It's, it's very important. And I, th that we, we know that. And that's, I think that's why when me and Dave got super busy, we were like this, we, this isn't manageable for one, two, two people, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it wasn't, we felt so guilty if we weren't like answering people's answers right away. Like, I think it was like, this is not our, th the amount of business that we were getting, we weren't capable of serving everyone the same quality as we would like. like yeah, like our expectations of how we were doing business before, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think um, that like with you guys coming on board really, really supported us. Yeah. And then like obviously being good at what you guys do too, obviously helps too, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like it's so hard when you get to a level, right. <laughs> yeah. To, to, to serve everyone Absolutely. that top notch. Cause it's like you have a meeting and then you got like 10 missed calls and then you're like, Oh my God, playing catch up. Right. Yeah. yeah. But being able to, I, 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 I totally hundred percent agree with you. Cause I still feel like I do that is like answer them right away as soon as you can yeah. Yeah. or let someone else know that. Uh, or let them know that someone else is helping them. Yeah. Right? yeah. Or be Absolutely. in communication yeah. with them. Like if I miss a call, like if I'm in a call and I'm in a meeting, I'll just text them and be like, hey, I'm just in a meeting right now. I'll call you as soon as I finish. So then that way they're at least they feel like they're getting served mm -hmm. and not just a missed call. Like, fuck, this guy's not answering my phone call. Exactly. So like I always respond right away like that I'm like I'm in something and I'll call them as soon as I finish. So that way they feel like they're still getting that service yeah. even though you're not answering the call right away. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah so... It's just about them being complete about something. Right? If they're if they're looking for the call, and then you know you get the message. Okay, well I'll just wait. You know, yeah. you know, twenty minutes, half an hour. I'll get the call sometime, and they're okay with it. And they move on, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're gonna sit there. You know, am I making the right decision with this realtor? Yeah, yeah is this guy just ghosted me? <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, that kind exactly. of deal. <laughs> what's What's the biggest lesson you've learned so far just being in real estate full time now? The biggest thing is just um, there's highs and there's lows. Um, you definitely feel all sorts of ways when you're in real estate. Um, you know, you feel extremely happy some days, you feel really sad. Um, the biggest thing is just support. Bro, you've been, the, you've been like this, this whole oh, yeah. year. <laughs> you've seen everything, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. You guys both have yeah. seen Trust everything me. with yeah. me. Because yeah. we've been there. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So, 
But that's what's the biggest lesson? Just high and lows. Uh, no, and, the biggest lesson、it. is support.、Uh, so the support there is exactly what I needed because when I joined Honda, the support was there、uh-huh. from the management to the team to the sale. Just going through, there was just some piece of support every step of the way.、Uh-huh. Even the celebrations, there was support, and the celebrations are what feels the best, right? Yeah,、um, it's just you know. Hounding up and just you know going out having drinks and just celebrating right. Yeah. So every step of the way there is what、um, really created me who I was. And、mm-hmm. without your guys' support, I would not be who I am today. In absolute. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, because it is important to have that, and that's what me and Jason were talking about. Is like when you're in a team atmosphere, like you celebrate your wins and your failures, but you at least you have someone to talk to about how to get you out of that zone,、mm-hmm. and then.、Um, You kind of have someone to bounce off ideas because when we were like independent agents, the only person you had was yourself, <laughs> right? And it's bro, it is lone. All the, all, nothing against individual agents, but from our experience, you you too, being in real estate by yourself is lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it is. It really is. Because、yeah. like. If a deal goes sour or something happens, you <laughs> literally have no one to vent to, and like no one else really understands. Yeah, because they're not in it. Yeah, and then if you're dealing with someone that's like kind of outside the team, like bro, I don't care about your issues. I got my own issues, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But the great thing about a team atmosphere too is that like even if you're you're in a like a space where you're like shit, I'm not performing. And you see someone else performing, then you're like, "Fuck! I need to get my shit up." Like that's true. There's like a momentum effect. Yeah. So it's, it's like it's like snowballing. It's like okay, well,、um, like it makes you kind of grind harder when you see other people grinding as well.、And、That's it's, true. It's like a a momentum that you get from a team atmosphere. Yeah, and the thing is, is that with teams, it's not just you know if there's a team, oh my god, it, there's the support there. It's not like that at all,、mm-hmm. right? There's some teams, even team leaders, that are just there for the money. Yeah. They just really want to support as much as they can, just to make their associates good enough, and then boom, they disappear. You、yeah. know what I mean? They're doing their own deals, whatever it is. They go on vacation, right?、Yeah. But you, with you guys, it wasn't like that. You know, <laughs> it was you know from start. You guys are still training me. You guys are still giving me advice.、Mm-hmm. I still take every single thing、um, that you guys give me, and I I save it, right?、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what a lot of you know you know realtors that first start off they should realize is that. Um, picking a team—it's not just about if there's just a team of you know ten, fifty, whatever、mm-hmm. how many people there are. Just because there's so many people does not mean the team atmosphere is good.、Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just cutthroat. Sometimes it's a little bit crazy, right? So, best piece of advice is just to kind of get down and kind of realize what your goals are and how much time available that you do have to be putting towards the team.、Mm-hmm. Because you're essentially putting a lot more time than you would if you were alone, right? Because if you want more success. You need to put more time, right?、Yeah. So, that's the kind of the correlation between things, I guess. Yeah, it's important. I wish I started off in a team when I first got into real estate,、mm-hmm. but we did the next best thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were at you, you. I remember you asked me. It was like, uh, like you, we 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 went to Maxwell. No, and then, I went to yeah.、Maxwell. You went to Maxwell. And then you got one month's free commit, <laughs> free brokerage fees, and then you left. <laughs> you didn't even stay. Yeah, I was joining, and it. Yeah, I was. I think the reason why me and Dave are so supportive is because we've been independent, and for myself, I've joined teams,、uh-huh. and it w- was bullshit. Like no support. Like I didn't feel like a community, you know.、Mm-hmm. And I think that's having that experience. I was like, yo, we need to. When I was in business, like, well, I guess I still am. But when I was newer and I had questions, and they would take a fucking day to get back to me,、mm-hmm. it's like it delays everything. You know what I mean? It does. And I was like, I didn't like that. I、mm-hmm. I didn't like that delay of like I'm ready to grind. I'm ready to hustle. Like I see it with you,、um, Jamie and Danny, and imagine like we're not there on the spot or like within a couple hours, right? It, yeah. It just, I think that's why we were able to grow it because it's like everything is like every everyone and everything impacts everything, and it's like we I think we we know now our our value of like we actually bring a lot to the table, right?、Mm-hmm. And then with your guys's feedback too, it's like yeah, like 
this is what we feel like a team should be like um yeah instead of like you know what you were saying like in it just train a little bit get your own deals like blah blah blah. like you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah, but, yeah. it's all about the culture oh yeah we're trying right. to build a culture yeah like a longevity culture because the thing is that in order for us to grow we need to take a step back and and train and get the associates to a level where they can perform right mm -hmm. and then that way in that it helps us as well yep. like because then that way we know that the service that uh our clients are getting is the same service that they would get from us from you guys yeah yeah yeah. What is one common myth about real estate you think that you want to debunk? So a lot of people think that real estate agents are also sleazy. Mm. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the client has all the control. We don't touch the money. We don't do anything. Like even when you give the deposit, the deposit goes into a trust account held by the broker. Mm. Right? So the real estate agent doesn't do anything that pushes you in the wrong direction. Mm. If you feel like you're getting misled, <laughs> then then yeah, you would sort of feel that. But yeah. uh, in all honesty, you don't really get an agent that's really sleazy, right? It's more, um, you know, they're not providing enough value or they're not just catering to your needs the way that you want to. Yeah. But... Um, I agree. I, I think I think most agents are good people, mm -hmm. right, with their mm -hmm. clients. But there's a lot of agents that are just, that don't have good relationships with other realtors. So they're they're all good to their their clients, but they're horrible to other <laughs> agents. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're bad. They're. I think personally, I think all agents will be good to their customers. Yeah. But like yeah. when it when it becomes to working with a deal with another realtor. Oh, mm -hmm. on the other side. Other side. Yeah, that's where the, the bad side comes. And I wish I wish a lot of clients could see how some realtors act with other realtors. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. It's because, crazy. Yeah. Because even when, you know, you're handling the sale of your clients yep. and, you know, you're giving your absolute best to your client and then you go up to another realtor. Yeah. If you can't work well with the other realtor, they're not budging. Yeah. They're not going to give you the damn best price, even if your life depended on it. Right. Yeah. Because if you're an asshole up front oh, yeah. or they're just creating this vibe that they don't need you or anything. <laughs> your realtor needs to create a positive space exactly. for the, both realtors to work together yeah. because as soon as that's established, the deal's going to go through however it's going to be made uh -huh. because if there's something there, it's going to go through, right? Yeah. So it's the relationship, exactly what you said, between the client and also the realtor. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like if there's a huge resistance off the bat, the deal's going to go fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? But when you have a good relationship with the realtor from the very beginning and it's like a respectable playing because like at the end of the day we just represent the clients mm -hmm. right and we're mediators so once you start getting really emotional in the transaction with the realtor like it's already a recipe for like failure oh you yeah know? so you need to have like a clear like like you just need to act in your client's interest and then you just have a like a calm conversation between the seller uh realtor and the buying realtor and then like it makes the transaction way smoother yes start to finish Man, but I tell you, there's some realtors out there that just, you're like, how are you even representing this client? <laughs> like, yeah. there's deals this year where I'm like, holy, I'm like, I don't even want to work with this realtor. Yeah. And this is what's happening. I'll send them the messages to the client, the buyer, and they'd be like, yeah, we don't want to work with this guy. This guy's making everything complicated, you know? Even a simple thing, just asking for a piece of document or just, yeah. you know, even... Even if you go in a lower offer, there there's a way to deal with it versus being like taking it personally, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in real estate, you know that that happens. But some agents take it so personally where they they will sabotage the deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and where it could have been done, right? Yeah, it's just keeping yeah. the personal life out of the business, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're representing the client, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're, you know, the other realtor is being a complete dick, yeah. whatever he's doing or she's doing, yeah. you have to put that aside. You got to take it as a hit mm -hmm. because if your client still wants that house, you mm -hmm. still got to make it happen some way. If you're going to be playing the person that's going to, you know, be the bitch, whatever it is, yeah. you just have to do it, uh -huh. right? Because at the end of the day, when your client's happy, you've done your job properly, exactly. right? Because that's what you're doing. You're the agent to get the deal done, yeah. right? Yeah, and Service. you're almost there. I mean, if they're putting in an offer and that jackass is doing whatever, just suck it up <laughs> yeah. and just do it and just yeah. get it done. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. What else could you do? Yeah. Service. 
So, so Jay, you when you, we we first start, you first started with us. I think your goal was five deals, six deals, ten deals. What was it your fir- initially? Uh, so when I started in uh, April, there my goal was ten deals for the whole year. Yeah, because deals were actually very hard and before that. Before that, yeah. and I thought that you know, finding they still are. <laughs> they, they still yeah. are absolutely. Yeah. They still are. Just finding the person and then building the type of report in yeah. the state of mind where they're ready to buy or sell that timing is very small Mm -hmm. when they're ready they're already looking for an agent Mm -hmm. and you're majority of the time not there because of the marketing because all those things because if you're a new agent no one knows who you are Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so yeah so that 10 goal mark was where i was at for from four i mean from april to the end of the year so that was eight months kind of deal i was thinking about at least a deal a month and i was gonna be working full time the entire time to Mm -hmm. get to my goal right that's pretty reasonable but yeah you more than doubled it now yeah. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best though. Yeah, I was going to I wanted to ask like like um what had your mindset change to to cuz I not, I think your goal now was 30 or what is it now for I don't what is, what is your goal next year? So my goal is 30 for the end of this year. So Oh, I'm, end of this year. End of this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm at 22. I've got eight deals to do in the next, um, so the rest of October, November, and December. So mm-hmm. it's about two and a half months. It's doable. Mm-hmm. I absolutely think I can do it too. I'm mm-hmm. going to really push as hard. Mm-hmm. Um, my next school year, I want to push it up to 50. I've always thought that I wanted to push it that hard because if I can go this hard this year, I can always push it harder next year, right? Mm-hmm. There's something that I'm missing that I'll find out this year mm-hmm. that I can push on to next, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you're asking how my mindset shifted. Yeah. So prior to joining the team, my goal was already 10. But after I met you guys and I understood about the systems that you were doing and the amount of support, you guys give us leads that um, absolutely work very well, mm-hmm. where they came from, sometimes the referrals, all sorts of those things. It was very helpful for me because as I was doing more deals, it became more and more like my the back of my hand, mm-hmm. right? It became easier, and I started to build rapport quicker. Yeah, you you stopped calling us as much as you did at the beginning. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't even call you guys anymore at all, yeah. except to say, you know, or like some crazy ass yeah, something some that happens, things. right? Like, oh my god, the basement's wavy. Are you yeah. worried? Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I I kind of understand. So mindset, something. change your mindset to you to, shift your mindset. Yeah to grow yeah. yeah so i was at uh 10 when i prior to join and after i joined you guys my mindset shifted mm-hmm. because i started seeing how hard you guys push and how much integrity you guys have to push the business far beyond where i even thought a business could even go uh-huh. right from the systems that you guys have from the events that you guys do for how much you give back towards the clients mm. to how much you guys are involved with everything that you guys are already doing on top i have no idea how you guys do everything all at once yeah. but i guess it takes <laughs> time to build it within your schedule yeah. right yeah. so during that 10 i decided you know after i closed five deals all from one apartment area that you gave me the idea to go towards mm-hmm. and that's when i bought my first place mm-hmm. after that it jumped from two to seven right yeah. and then i thought okay well I'm at seven and it's May. What a stupid goal of 10, right? It's okay. So (laughs) so seven during that May, um, I decided, okay, well, why don't I set a realistic goal? Something that I can actually try to attain that I'll be happy when I get there, which was 30. Uh Next few months, it was dry as shit. Yeah. I was fucking scared. You know yeah. what I mean? It was hard. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you know, one month was like six deals. Next yeah. month was like six deals. And I was like, holy shit, you know, all the fruits of your hard work and labor come at some point. Whether if it's immediate, it, will, it won't ever just disappear. It yeah. will start building up to a threshold where it will kind of reward you at the end, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing like that will help with the business is just the consistency of it like just keep on doing what you need to do every week and like they just come in threes you know Mm -hmm. like you can't you can't be attached to the result and and that's what i've been saying with you as well to just like just keep doing what you need to do keep that service and business up stay consistent and the shit will come right so it's like and what you were saying when you had that slow period in june i think everybody experienced that because there actually was a shift in uh stress test that's right yeah, yeah. that's so, right so once once that happened then everybody kind of readjusted and july on was been really crazy so yep yeah yeah that's uh, life that's life oh yeah you were really stressed <laughs> you do go through these <laughs> roller coasters i'm like bro nothing's even happening just re- relax okay <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's good though. Yeah. You have a good like a expectation of yourself, right? Yeah. And and you're trying to to reach a goal that you're committed to. So, but it's it's good to have that support to just like bring you back into a clear mind and and just keep on doing the work. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why the support is so important because if I was in that bad mindset, I don't know, I'd quit. I not want to do it anymore you know what if it was so overwhelming at some point that it just doesn't feel like it's worth it right yeah. yeah but then you know just grounding yourself and bringing you back up to where you need to be and just doing what you need to do every single day mm-hmm. yeah. is where you know you grow right because it's the hardest days when you don't want to do something and then you go and you do it is what's so important yeah it's rewarding it's a compounding effect right yeah, yeah. just the good days even the bad days and you put up a good plus you know it just keeps adding and adding and adding yeah it's tough because you're actually dealing with a lot of clients' emotions too. Oh yeah, like their emotions push onto you. Yeah. So you you almost have to create like a a degree of separation from it because if you're feeling some type of way about one deal, it may affect you on all the other deals you're working on too, just because of like the situation. So I try to keep a pretty clear mind with things, mm-hmm. just so it doesn't like bleed into everything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's really important too, yeah. right? yeah that's actually very true like real estate is very um emotional uh for for for, like the majority of people right Mm -hmm. especially first-time home buyers and when you're dealing with a lot and things don't go a certain way um and things go certain ways with other ways but like it's very easy i feel like it's very easy um if you aren't level-headed to get impacted by the business. Yeah, you can you get know? lost very easily. Very, very lost, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Lost. Yeah. I was there yeah, yeah. many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I mean. That's what we want to sh- uh, like share is like, even though you killed it this year, there has been ups and downs for you, right? Absolutely. And it's not, people think real estate's so easy. Oh, we did so many deals, blah, blah, blah. And it's not like, Rainbows and what is that saying? Butterflies. Sp- rainbows, not butterflies. rainbows and fucking unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> butterflies, unicorns. You know, <laughs> it's it's, you know, it. W- we're humans too, yeah. and we're we're realtors, but we don't know everything about real estate, and we do have emotions. So things do impact us, and things you know, we obviously are more knowledgeable than others, but we also have emotions, you know, and we are also humans. But I feel like. A lot of people put these on put us such on high pedestal that if we're not servicing or like or like just you know answering or whatever, it's like we're not doing our jobs. But it's at the end of the day, we're just humans too. We have yeah. a life outside of real estate, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize that it's like you're working with more than one client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. like they think that you're like their only client that they've you know, like that you're working with, but it's like, you're juggling this thing of like keeping rapport and building up and having conversations with everybody. Right. Absolutely. Like you're in the middle of talking to someone brand new. You're in the middle of negotiating a deal. You're in the middle of grabbing, (laughs) you know, presents for a client. You're in the middle of, you know, Oh my God, are the carpets clean yet? You're freaking out to make sure it is, you know, it's then you're CS you're at three inspections (laughs) back to back to back. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to be everywhere yeah. at once. Yeah, yeah. And, That's right. and and the thing is that everybody only sees the glory, not the fucking the grind, the grit, like yeah. all the shit in between, right? Because it's like you, they don't see what it's like like dealing with a lot of people, but it's like they only see the success. Absolutely. So, but you the the, the, the truth is is it's you you love it though. Oh yeah, I love yeah. it. You know, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> as much yeah. as we're ranting right now, we, it's like if you don't love it, yeah. you're you're out of it. You can't survive in this. Yeah, like, you got to love it, right? It's a it's passion. A, yeah, it's like a love hate relationship. You love it, but when it's good and when it's good, it's when it's bad. Isn't is when it's bad, right? Yeah. So, I I think the best thing is just the service and just like, you know, when a client is super happy and like you see a look on their face, like they're so grateful and all that stuff. I oh. think that's like a huge thing. Like once you hand over the keys, you see the possibility of what they're going to create in their new place. It's like, that's the goal. <laughs> makes absolutely. it all, it makes it all worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Dave, do you have any last questions for Jay or anything? <sighs> Where do you see yourself in the next five, 10 years? <laughs> five ten years oh, so i already know that answer <laughs> <laughs> so i haven't thought about 10 years even yeah but it's far i mean i do i have monetary goals uh-huh. i have investment goals 
I have outlooks on things, but anything can change at any point, right? But mm -hmm. uh, for real estate in general, I just want to get to the point where I can do deals comfortably uh -huh. at a higher price. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the average rate around now, I believe it's, you know, maybe 300, 350K. Um, but, you know, just averaging up, you know, five, six, 700, just yeah. keep going up year by year, just dealing with some better clients, just that understand my value and the value of the team mm -hmm. is uh, just so important, right? Yeah, it'll come. Yeah. But that's, yeah, definitely a good goal to have. Yeah. Just yeah. increasing the volume. Yeah, and, that's and right. quality of volume. Yeah, the quality and just, you know, if it, if it's better to do less deals so that you can have more time with your family and just time with your friends, mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's where I want to be, right? Yeah. And I just want to do less deals, but just higher price point deals mm -hmm. so that it's just offset by just how many you're doing, right? Yeah, I was listening to that Thatch Nguyen's podcast, and he said the ultimate goal is not just financial freedom, but also emotional freedom. Yes. He says that's the real definition of success because who cares if you have all the money in the world and stuff like that and like you could do whatever you want. But if you're not emotionally free, like stress, like anxiety, all that stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. while you're rich, he's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, financial and emotional freedom. And yes, uh, so. health freedom too, right? Yeah. I guess that's, well, that's part of emotion. emotional. Yeah. yeah. We, we like to leave it off if there's any last things you know you want to say or advice you want to give i mean you did you killed it this year um and i think you, you know you're the salesman of the year for us <laughs> <laughs> um so i do think you're good at sales i do think you're good at building rapport and mm -hmm. uh there's a presence with you that when you're connecting with people you're connecting with people right and you're, you're serving them so i don't know anything you want to share um, or any advice um, for anyone out there that um, wants to get to the next level and they're kind of stuck or something? Yeah, just, um, I'd like to just say, like, I was at a part where, you know, I was just not motivated with, any, motivated with anything, right? I didn't know what I wanted, but even the smallest glimpse of, you know, oh, will car sales help me with my business? Even that smallest thought, that could be brushed away as easy as it comes, mm -hmm. right? But I took that thought and I just pushed it to where it became, where I was, you know, dressing up and going to work and just being there every single day. To from there, just moving on to real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And then that momentum is what I've been riding the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I guess the best piece of advice is when it's going well, keep working at it extremely hard because it continues to get better. Sometimes it won't give you what you want, but believe me, that threshold keeps building to the part where when it explodes, it's going to be all the rewards that you ever wished for, maybe even more, mm -hmm. right? So don't discourage yourself because even one thing that goes wrong won't be the end of everything, right? Just keep pushing, keep going, keep believing in yourself and you'll get there. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't, like, especially now in this, in this world, like it's like such a fast pace. People aren't used to delayed gratification, like putting in the work and getting a result for the future, right? So they won't even put in the work in the beginning because they're like, I'm never going to get there, right? But like, mm -hmm. or they give up right away and yeah. it's been like, bro, it's been um, a month. You haven't even worked yet. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's yeah. right. Yeah. And that's the toughest thing is yeah. like seeing, just putting in the work, staying consistent and, and like seeing the future of the potential of it without having a result tomorrow it may take a little bit of time and that delayed gratification is is huge on mindset and also discipline if you don't have that mindset of discipline for delayed gratification you'll never get there absolutely and uh just one more quick thing is just um even ryan sarhan just reading his books he just mentions every single person in this world has a thousand four hundred and forty minutes each day mm. right what you do with those minutes is up to you you decide to waste 800 minutes just binge watching Netflix all day, that's your choice, right? Mm. What are you gonna do with the other minutes that you have for the rest of the day? That's what kind of grounded me mm. to decide for myself if I wanted to you know, play games all day, watch Netflix all day, do nothing all day, what is gonna benefit me? Mm -hmm. You know, If I'm continuing this route for the next five years, I'm still gonna be exactly what I'm doing. Even worse, my health is worse, I'm not going out, I'm not doing anything. Mm. Like, the curve of where things are going, it will continue to go. You know, mm -hmm. if you keep trying and keep going at something, it'll continue to go upwards, right? Mm -hmm. So 
that's one of the things. I mean, Ryan Saran's amazing. Like, it's like <laughs> a lot of good shit. Yeah. But, uh, no, he kills it, man. He's one, yeah, he's, but yeah, he's but one he, of my favorite too, yeah. But his systems at the end of the day is yeah. what creates who he is, right? Like yeah. his emotional joy, creating, you know. He's a good system. Crazy yeah, success yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I always say, like, I, I try never to say that I don't have enough time. Because there's way there's people that are doing bigger things than me that have the same amount of time, yeah, you know? Exactly. And so when people tell me they don't have enough time, I'm like, bro, you got time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's like, a world of reason. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like, you got time. You, got, you don't got two hours to spare at night while you're watching Netflix. You don't got yeah. two hours. You, know, you got time, right? It's not yeah. that they don't have time. They don't make time. Exactly. And that's what's irritating. Yeah. It's that they're 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 saying these things like for example you know say you know my my young brother or somebody they're a little bit overweight yeah and then they, and then they make <laughs> a big deal it, about it yeah they make a big deal yeah. about it I'm, i need to diet i need to do this i need yeah. to do this and then later on their stories you know over instagram or anything, they're eating out they're eating all you can eat buffets and not running <laughs> bro you they're just called out your brother <laughs> it's, it's fine it's fine he's not gonna <laughs> listen <laughs> No, but the fact of the matter is everybody does it. You know, yeah. they say these things, they say these words, mm -hmm. but it's not putting it to action, yeah. right? Yeah. The action is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It's not saying it, it's not writing it down. It's not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's going out and doing the first thing that needs to be done to get it rolling, right? Mm -hmm. And then continuing to take the steps afterwards. Yes. Action is everything. Yeah. Gonna take, <laughs> gonna take action first. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll end it on that note. Where where did the where can they find you, Jay? Jason dot nago at yycrealestate dot com. See, you said nago. Nago. Yeah. Is it no or nago? Depends who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nago. Okay. It is no though. Well, keep yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank um, you guys for having me. Yes, great podcast. Keep killing it, man. Yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Peace. Woo. That was good. I'm hammered.